Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Preston here from Bull City Reader and welcome to this week's video. How's everybody going? I hope y'all are having a good day, a good week. Uh, things have been busy here. My background's probably going to change in the next video because I got new bookcases coming in. So we're going to start transforming this room into the baby's room. So that starts this weekend. I don't know where I'm going to film for uh, next week's video. But we'll worry about that when we get to it. Saw Metallica last night. Had a blast um, such a good concert I've seen them four times now and they are one of my favorite bands and they're so good live check them out if you can I got a new Kindle Paperwhite in uh, the other week I had a six generation Kindle Paperwhite and Amazon had a deal where you could trade in your old one they had a special price it, they marked it down plus I could trade in my Kindle get 25% off and a $25 gift card so like all said and done I got a brand new Kindle Paperwhite for it's like 70 bucks or something like that. So I had a, I jumped on that. To get the books on your Kindle, you have to download them like one by one. You have to touch them. There's not just a, I don't know a good way to just say download them all. Maybe there is and I just, I don't know. So I decided when I was re-downloading my books, I had so many books on there because when I covered the indie community, a lot of the authors will mark their books down for free or 99 cents. Um, they're fairly cheap when they come out. So I have 1,500 books on my Kindle. And as I was downloading them, I was writing down covers that grabbed me, looking at them on the Kindle Paperwhite. So for those that haven't seen the screen of a Kindle Paperwhite, I'm going to hold it up for you. This is what the screen looks like. So as I was downloading these books, I was writing down covers that grabbed my attention based on being black and white. So I've created a list. Um, this is going to be a several part video, probably at least three parts. Uh, and I'm going to share with you some of the books that grabbed my attention that I have not read. I did throw a few in there that I like the covers that I have read that I think you should read. Um, so today I'm going to share with you 10 of the covers of the 1500 that I had. Um, I came up with a list of like 30, around 30. So today I'm going to share with you 10 of those books. First up is Teddy Bears in Monsterland by Justin Sloan. I'll throw a black and white version here if I can figure out how to do it. And a colored version here. Hopefully I'm able to do it or I'm going to look weird holding my fingers like this for a second. I've had to write all this information down because there's 10 books. I'm not going to remember them all. So Teddy Bears by Justin Sloan is the first book in his Teddy Defender series. Uh, this is a child slash preteen series, but yet it's entertaining for adults as well. It's just a, a fun story all around from what I've heard. I haven't read it. I have not read this one. There is an audiobook uh, put out for this if you're interested in audiobooks. Uh, it is narrated by Michael Gilliland, is I believe how you say it. Um, just a quick synopsis for this book, because I'm trying to keep this video short, hopefully. It says, uh, Teddy bears come to life at night to protect the children. One of the teddy bears' boys was taken in the night, and the bear must travel into a land of monsters to rescue his boy. Is there a bigger plot against children everywhere? Find out in Teddy Bears in Monsterland by Justin Sloan. I did interview the author when I ran a podcast, so I'll link down below to where you can find that interview if you would like to listen to it. I think we talked about the series for a few minutes, but we mainly focused on a few of his other works. So the second book I have for you is called Fate Marked by David Estes. Again, you know, black and white cover here, so you can see kind of what it would look like on the Kindle Paperwhite versus the cover here. The regular color, colored one. Uh, so this is the first book in his Fate Mark epic. Uh, I don't know how many books. I think there's four or five books total. I could be wrong. This is a fantasy story, um, but it's also okay for teens to read. 
This book became a number one bestseller in several categories. It became a number one bestseller on Amazon in epic fantasy, in sword and sorcery, in military fantasy, in dark fantasy, in coming of age, in myth and legends, in Arthurian fantasy, in medieval fiction, and in historical fiction. There is an audiobook put out uh, for this book and the series by Podium Publishing, and it's narrated by Derek Perkins. I have the audiobook. I've listened to a clip of it, and it did sound really good. As for a synopsis for this, it says, They are the fate-marked, misunderstood, worship, hated, murdered at birth. Their time to step in the light has come. An ancient prophecy foretold their coming the chosen few who will bring peace to the land, embroiled in a century of mistrust and war. When kings start dying, that hope and belief swiftly turns to fear. Rowan Lauren is one of the fate mark, but, his, but has hidden his mark of power his entire life, fearing the damage it might cause to those around him. A great evil is coming he can't hide anymore. So that is Fate Mark by David Estes. The third book I wanted to share with you in this video is called The Borrowed World by Franklin Horton. This is the first book in his Borrowed World series. Uh, this is an end of the world dystopian. I don't know if end of the world's right the right term. It's a dystopian um, novel. There is an audiobook for this. I can't remember who put the audiobook out. The narrator is Kevin Pierce. I have listened to about 10% of this book. I haven't finished it. That's why it's on this list. The narrator is amazing. His voice fits the character, the personality of the character, the tone of the book. It just fits. So a quick synopsis for you on this one is, if society fell apart, could your family survive? Um, if you were on the road, could you make it home to them? Uh, that is the situation that Jim Powell finds himself in. He is hundreds of miles from his home when ISIS unleashes an attack on America's infrastructure. Can all his training and skills get him back to his family? I did interview the author. I have met him, um, and I did interview him for the podcast, and we talk about this series. So I'll link again to that podcast down below. So I'm cheating with the fourth book. The fourth book, it's not even a book. It's a short story. I have read it. It, it'll get you in, in the feels. You're going to feel something reading this book. Um, it's called The Dark Age by Jason Gurley. As I said, this is a short story. For those that don't know, Jason Gurley started out as an indie, um, as an indie author. He also did covers. Uh, then he got picked up by a publisher. He re-released his popular indie book with the publisher. Uh, it's called Eleanor. And he has a new, I think it's a YA book coming out this year. Uh, but he has a lot of stories that he self-published himself. This is a short story that he put out. Like I said, it's going to get you in the feels when you read it. The synopsis for it is, On the day she was born, he left for the stars. He watches her grow up on the screen, misses her first words, misses her first step. She's never kissed his scratchy cheek or fallen asleep on his shoulder. He's never wiped away her tears or sung her to sleep. Now she's a toddler, and he's about to enter hibernation sleep. And when he wakes nearly 150 years in the future, his family will be gone. And it says, this is a short story for every father who never wants his daughter to grow up. I have a signed copy of the book. This is the only one I'm going to show y'all, even though I have some of these and physical copies as well. But um, when I ordered this... His daughter helped inspire this story, him writing it. So, not only did the author sign it, Jason Gurley. Let's see if I can get this to show up. So, not only did Jason Gurley sign it, he got his daughter, who was really young at the time, uh, to sign the books as well for people that ordered it from him. I thought that was a... Woo, focus, focus. I thought that was a really cool touch. Uh, and like I said, it's a really touching story um you'll probably feel something when you read that book but anyway <laughs> the, <laughs> the dark age by jason Gurley. check it out the fifth book i want to share with you is called the kill switch by ernie lewis so this is a short story again that can be read in one sitting it's a little bit longer than jason Gurley's. um this book falls more in the science fiction genre uh so if you're into science fiction this might be your kind of you know this might be your cup of tea or whatever your jam 
The synopsis is, in a war with artificial intelligent robots, humans clone themselves to create a virtually limitless army, and as the war raged on, authentic human numbers dwindled. But when a cloned soldier spots a robot protecting a human child through the apocalyptic wasteland, everything he knows gets turned upside down when he finds that this little girl just may be the key to turn the tide of the war. Book number six is going to be Banished by Michael Weishart. So this is the first book in his Street Rat, Street Rats of Aramore series. Banished is going to be a YA fantasy story. Um, this is the 2018 winner of the CIPA EVVY Awards for New Adult Fiction and the 2018 winner of the Global Ebook Awards for Historical Fiction and the Medieval category. There is an audiobook for this. Again, it's put out by Podium Publishing, so it's great quality. Um, and this is narrated by Tim Gerald Reynolds. Quick synopsis on this book is, My name is Arion, and I have been trained to fight since I was old enough to walk. My people are the Upeka. It means warrior in the old tongue. To the rest of the world, it means, well, it wouldn't be polite for me to say. As far back as I can remember, I've always had one dream, to be the youngest warrior of my clan. My father was a warrior and his father before him. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that being the best isn't always a good thing. In a society where the strongest rule, staying on top is a constant battle, one that has put not only my life in danger, but my family's also. How far will I be willing to go to save them? What will I prepare what am I what will I be prepared to lose? So Banished by Michael Weishart. Check it out. I'll link to it down below as well. So the next book, uh, the seventh book, seventh out of ten that I'm going to tell you about in this video is The Girl with the Red Balloon by Catherine Locke. This is the first book in her Balloon Maker series. I believe there's two out right now. I don't know how many there are going to be because I don't know too much about the series other than I thought it looked good and I bought it. Uh, this is going to be a this is going to fall in your YA science fiction slash fantasy genre. And the synopsis for this book is when 16-year-old Ellie Baum accidentally time travels via a red balloon to 1988 East Berlin, she's caught up in a conspiracy of history and magic. She meets members of an underground guild in East Berlin who uses balloons and magic to help people escape over the wall. But even to the balloon maker, Ellie's time travel is a mystery. When it becomes clear that someone is using dark magic to change history, Ellie must risk everything, including her only way home, to stop the process. So that is The Girl with the Red Balloon by Catherine Locke. The eighth book is called They Mostly Come Out at Night by Benedict Patrick. This is the first book in his Yarns World series. I believe there's, is it five or four? There's several books out in the series. Um, this became a number one bestseller in folklore. It was a top 10 in fantasy, a top 10 in myth and legends, um, a top five in dark fantasy slash horror, and a top five in fairy tales. Um, the quick synopsis on this book is the villagers of the forest seal, seal themselves in their cellars every night, whispering folk tales to each other about the monsters that prey on them in the dark. Only the Magpie King, their shadowy unseen protector, can keep them safe. However, when an outcast named Lonan begins to dream of the Magpie King's defeat at the hands of inhuman invaders, this young man must do what he can to protect his village. He is the only person who can keep his loved ones from being stolen away after dark, and to do so, he will have to convince them to trust him again. So again, they mostly come out at night by Benedict Patrick. Just look at these covers. They're just so beautiful. Black black and white color. Great, great covers. The ninth book I wanted to share with you today is called The Devil's Mouth by Matt Kincaid. This is the first book in the Alex Rains Vampire Hunter series. There's two books out in that series right now. This is going to be an urban fantasy thriller book. Um, I found out, of the, out about this book from another indie author. And the synopsis for this is the only things Alex, Alex Rain cares about are rock and roll, classic cars, and killing vampires. That is until he meets Carmen, a tough-as-nails cop who's hot on the trail of her missing little sister. When the two join forces, they leave a trail of corpses across the desert as they race against the clock, 
hunting an ancient evil that preys on the migrants of the American Southwest since the time of the Spanish conquest. When Alex leads Carmen deeper into the deadly secret world of vampire hunters and their quarry, a romance blooms that neither of them expected. But when it all goes wrong, Alex is forced to make a grueling choice. I've heard some really great stuff about this book. Maybe it's one that you'll enjoy. The final book I'd like to share with you today is called Evensong by Crystal Walsh. This is the first book in her, uh, I'm probably going to say it wrong, Moraitis trilogy. This is going to be an urban fantasy novel. Maybe, I'm, when I think urban fantasy, I think there's going to be like some romance. And I'm not sure if there is in this book. Um, it might just be more of a fantasy, but not like Lord of the Rings fantasy. Um, it'll probably make sense to you a little bit more why I say that when I read you the synopsis, which I want to do right now. Author Jeff Powell wakes up to find the impossible has happened. He is within his own novel, summoned into the fictional world of Fidal's Keep by a spell he didn't write. One, the house enchantress, hasn't figured out how to reverse. When the villain he's been struggling to write reveals himself, unleashing waves of terror and chaos, Jeff must use more than his imagination to save the characters he created and the woman he loves. Trapped within a world of his own creation, he must step outside the bounds of his narrative to help his characters defeat an evil no one anticipated, even if he must sacrifice his greatest gift. In the end, he has to ask, are novels really fiction or windows to other worlds? I thought that sounded like a very cool premise. It's kind of like, it sounds like it's almost going to be like a Connecticut Yankee and King Arthur's Court, just written today, I guess. Um, and I think that sounds really interesting. I like the premise of an author waking up in their own world. I think that's just neat. Um, and I know, I think I read the beginning. He kind of has like writer's block at the beginning. And then he goes to sleep and wakes up in the world. Uh, she did come on my podcast. So if you want to check it out, I'll link to that down below. You know, I will link to all the books down below as well. Some good news I didn't tell you at the beginning. I finished reading a book. Finally, I am out of my slump. So I hope to have a review for you soon on that book. I do have some more books. This is just part one. So let me know down below. Would you rather see part two or would you rather see a book review next? Um, let me know down in the comments. Thank you for watching. I hope this isn't as long as my other videos, which I highly doubt. But anyway, if you like what you saw, don't forget to subscribe. Whoosh! Throw the thing right there. Whoosh. YouTube says you're going to like this video that's right here. Hopefully you will and hopefully it's on my channel. Until next time, keep reading and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye, peoples.